To have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 17. John 17. John 17, we'll be covering verses 13 through 26. I'd like to talk to you tonight about Jesus prays for you. Isn't that a cool thought? That Jesus prays for us. And, uh, you know, the first thing you think of, now, how's he going to remember everybody's name? <laughs> but folks, he's Jesus, all right? Father, thank you for this night. And God, I thank you for just always being there. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. And God, I do thank you for Jesus. Lord, I just know he prayed for his disciples. He prayed for the lost. And Lord, what a blessing to think that Jesus prays for us. And so God, I pray this lesson tonight would be an encouragement to us knowing that we're never alone, and uh, there's never a time that we're not on your mind. And uh, God, I just, I just thank you for the promises of the Word of God. It is yes, it is amen, and God, I just thank you for how comforting uh, your Word is. So God, I pray that we would just uh, glean something from uh, this text that maybe we hadn't thought of or was just a good reminder. And God, we'd give you the glory. We'll give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Jesus prays for you. Number one, Jesus prays for our protection. Jesus prays for our protection. Number two, Jesus prays for our unity. He prays for our unity. And number three, Jesus prays for our love for one another. Jesus prays for our love for one another. John chapter 17, and as you see, uh, this whole chapter is in red. Uh, so this was Jesus uh, speaking to these, uh, the you know, to to his disciples. And at first, he talks about he's praying for himself, uh, what he is going to go through, and on the cross, uh, you know, the relationship between Jesus and. God was just amazing. You know, they thought alike. Uh, you know, they, they were so close. Jesus said many times, I and my Father are one. And folks, that alone should give you a hint in your relationship to our Heavenly Father. We need to be one with God. We need to be in tune with God. We need to be talking to God all the time. And the closer you get to God and the closer you get to the, Jesus, uh, the more you will make right choices, you'll pray the right prayers, and uh, God can use you for his glory. And then the second part of that is Jesus prays for his disciples, and then he prays for all believers. So verse 13, but now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And you know, you look at chapters in the Bible you know, about, uh, you know, Isaiah 53, he was a man of sorrow. But, you know, I, I was thinking about this today when I was going over this. And, you know, we see the cross and we understand that. But I am convinced that Jesus laughed with his disciples. Jesus smiled, you know, when, when, the, when he, he saw good things happening. And so, you think of the joy that Jesus had, uh, the joy in living, uh, the joy in mentoring, uh, the, the joy in you know, showing uh, not his power, but God's power. And so when we think of joy, uh, I always think of, you know, J is for Jesus. If you want true joy in your life, put Jesus number one. O is for others. All right, put others and the wise for yourself, okay? And if you can keep that in order there and, and keep that in line there, you will experience joy. And we know there's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness depends on my happenstance. So long as things are going well, we can be happy. But folks, joy comes from deep within your heart. Joy comes from knowing the Lord. Joy comes from knowing that even when you pass, as we did Herschel's funeral today, and, uh, you know, uh, truly, uh, he preached his own funeral. 
I'm telling you, I struggled none about writing uh, about him because of his life and uh, their life and what they did together. And when you think of serving the Lord, I'm telling you, there ought to be joy in your life. First Peter chapter 1. Let's look at this word called joy before we move on. First Peter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, In this you greatly rejoice. Of course, the word joy is in rejoice. Though for, for now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. Folks, you're not, I mean, it's just called life. Okay, things are going to happen. And, you know, it's, it's about being a human. It's about situations that come up. Okay, uh, and there's things called accidents also. I just learned uh, uh, today of the tragedy in Greenwood where uh, these three members of the Greenwood community passed away in a fire, and oh, my heart just went out to them, okay? It, it happens, but we have to understand, look at verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith, be much, faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may it be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart, you know, when we get to heaven, I don't think we're going to have a lot of questions for God. I've talked to a lot of people say, well, when I get there, I'm going to ask God. Folks, when you get there and you see Jesus and God and you're there, I'm telling you that's going to be the last thing on your mind. And I also believe he will erase all the bad memories from your mind. Why? Because of Revelation chapter 21. There be no sorrow. There be no crying. There be no tears in heaven. And so we have to understand, even the moments that make us sad, okay, we have joy because of who, who we are and because of wh what Jesus has done. Verse 8, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. All right? It's kind of like you watch those game shows and every once in a while, somebody, I, I was watching, what is that, Wheel of Fortune the other night, and I don't watch it on a regular basis, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying. And this lady won $100,000, and I am telling you, she went berserk, screaming and hollering and jumping. And you know what I thought of? I thought, that's what I'm going to be like when I get to heaven. I, don't, I didn't win $100,000 100, I want something much more precious than money. Joy. And folks, there's enough sadness. There's enough negativity. I wish somebody would do a news thing on good things that are happening in the United States of America. Because all you hear is the tragedies. And I'll be so glad when this election is over. All right? I am telling you, Christians ought to have more joy than anyone on the face of this earth. Joy inexpressible. Verse 9, receiving the end of your faith and the salvation of your souls. If you lose everything in life, there is one thing that you cannot lose, folks, according to God's holy word, is your relationship with Jesus Christ. That should give us joy. So we see... Jesus talking about our lives need to be full of joy. Why? Because Jesus is praying for you. You're never alone. There's no such thing as a hopeless situation. Verse 14, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are, are not in the world, just as I am not of the world, of the world, both times. And he's talking about the word of God. Folks, there are people that they could care less about God's holy word. They don't apply none of it to their life. They don't believe in it. But folks, we have that joy. We have that promise from God. And everything written in Scripture was written for us. It's to encourage us. It's to lead us. It's to guide us. And the world hates 
the, you know, a God and hates the word of God. Verse 15, I do not pray that you should be taken out of them, taken them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. And here's where I say, Jesus prays for our protection. Now, folks, Satan is real. Satan is alive. He is, he is trying to trip us up. I think of, you know, I just, I just don't, totally don't understand how somebody uh, could just take a man's life in cold blood. I can tell you how, folks, it's the evil one. So Jesus is praying for our protection. 365 times in the Word of God, it says, do not fear. Folks, we have nothing to fear. And when you think of God praying for you, and since God prays for you, I am telling you, we need to talk to him. There needs to be that open communication, all right? Even when you have fear, you need to pray, God, God, take this fear away from me. Take this fear away. I know fear is not from you. And folks, we have to replace fear with faith. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may also be sanctified by the truth. Sanctified means set apart. Sanctified with the word means I literally apply what the word says to my life. Folks, we're all on a spiritual journey. We all should desire to get closer and closer and closer to God. That's that sanctification prof, uh, uh, you know, uh, journey that we have. And we have to understand none of us have arrived. Philippians 1, 6, he that began a good work in me will continue to do it in my life. So folks, we're, you think about it, we're all, we're all a project of God. And man, to know that Jesus is praying for you. First Peter 5. First Peter 5. Look at this scripture here. First, first Peter 5. Not first John. First Peter 5, 6. Talking about he prays for our protection. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares upon him. Folks, he knows the need. He knows the pain. He knows the hurt. And, and you need to just say, God, I, man, I'm giving you this situation. God, I'm giving you this person. Folks, we have burdens. It can be family members. Uh, it can be, you know, people that in our lives. And, and we need to, you know, pray for them. Okay, pray for them as Jesus prays for us. He cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, which means serious. Be vigilant means stay at it. Stay at it. Praying is work, folks. Okay? It's work. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking him whom he may devour. Folks, I'm telling you, he bluffs a lot of the times. Okay, when you hear a lion, if you've ever heard a lion roar, I'm telling you, it's just, it just kind of goes through you. And that's what Satan wants you to feel. He wants, he wants you to feel like there is no hope. He wants you to feel like you are defeated. He wants you to think, for you to think, you know, I am nothing. You know, he, he, he doesn't want you to have confidence in yourself and confidence in God. And here's the key right here, folks. Verse 9 resist him. All right. There's times in my life that I just say it right out loud. Devil, I know it's you. Get out of my life. Resist him. And another way of resisting, okay, is, is the word of God and meditating on the word of God. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you. Folks, nobody likes to go through problems. 
Nobody likes to go through trials, but the key is to learn from them. Learn from them. And you can imagine what our world would be if God gave us everything we, that we asked for. Okay? And, and we just have to, no matter what's going on our, in our lives, trust God. I love this, this word, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Don't be shaken. Don't be surprised. Okay? And by the way, don't say this. Don't say, what else could happen? I have learned not to say that. All right? To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. So Jesus prays for our uh, protection. Number two, Jesus prays for our unity. Look at this, verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Word. And folks, we should never give up on praying for somebody. We never know when our prayers are going to be answered. We never know when a situation is going to be where it turns somebody's life around. Okay? And, and you know, the Word of God can change people. That they all may be one. Notice one, two, three, four, five times in this Scripture, he uses the word one. Jesus is saying how important one, okay? That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. Many times in the scriptures when he's trying to explain things to the disciples, he would say, my, I and my Father are one. And then he says uh, uh, that, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you had sent me. I in you and uh, be one in us. He's saying that's the type of relationship we need to have with God the Father. Whereas, man, we're thinking about God. Folks, there's many times in my prayer time, I'll just stop and I'll say, God, please give me the mind of Christ. Could you imagine how much better we would do if we had the mind of Christ. If we just thought like he thought, if we just went where he would go, if we just read scripture like he read scripture, where he depended on his heavenly father. Folks, we need to be one. Verse 22, and the glory which you gave me, uh, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. And you know, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes talks about a three, three chords, how much harder it is to break three chords than it is one. And folks, I believe this uh, applies to our, our family's life. Man, a, a family that prays together stays together. Unity in the body of Christ. Uh, in unity uh, in the church also. We need to be one is what he is saying. Verse 23, I and them, and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. Notice again, he's using the word perfect, okay? It's not that we agree upon everything. I mean, you get, <laughs> you get three Baptists together, and they're not going to agree on everything. But the key is, again, in, in business meetings, all right, everybody you know, can, can give an opinion. Everybody can say, here's what I think. But when all is said and done, after we vote, we go with the majority, and we need to be one. If we didn't vote for it, the church said, yes, we are going to do that. We need to stay in one. Folks, I cannot tell you how important it is for a New Testament church to stay together. Okay, to, to love one another, to, to, again, not be cookie cutters and we all think the same way, all right? You know, you need out-of-the-box uh, thinkers. You need conservative thinkers. You need innovative thinkers. You need all kinds. But we still are one in Christ, and that is so important. And made perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as I have loved you. 
Folks, it breaks my heart when I hear a church shutting down because of differences. It breaks my heart. Now, folks, we, we need to not let Satan in. We need to stay together as one. Ephesians chapter 4, where you talk about some good scripture here. Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. And these are characteristics that we need in our lives. With lowliness, which is humility. With gentleness. All right? And folks, you've been around bullies. Nobody likes a bully, okay? Nobody likes someone trying to take over. We are all on equal ground. When we look at the cross, every one of us is just as important to Jesus, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in his eyes. With lowliness, gentleness, long-suffering, which is patience. We need patience in our lives. We need patience. Uh, people grow at different, you know, uh, you know, like a husband and wife. One, one may have been in church their whole life and another had not been. And they're not going to grow at the same, uh, you know, rate. So we need to be uh, gentle and, and patient, bearing one another in love. Folks, love covers a multitude of sin, the Word says. We should genuinely love one another. I just crack up when, <laughs> when people try to misquote scriptures and say, well, you know what? You know, I, I, I have to love you, but I don't have to like you. Well, where is that scripture at? Okay, that, that is ridiculous. All right, you love, we love, and that's what a genuine love. There, folks, there's nothing like it in the body of Christ. And it says, uh, uh, endeavor, love one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Folks, this, there's enough war in this world. There's enough going on that doesn't show peace. God, you, you know, when we come uh, here on, on Sundays, folks, we need to be people of peace. We need to be people of love. When we're out in the world, we need to do the same thing. The world is watching us. And what do you think the world thinks when a church shuts down or, or, or you drive by one and it's been sold for something else? Okay, that is not a good thing. Verse 4, there is one body... That's the body of Christ, one spirit, the Holy Spirit, just as you were called in one hope. Our hope is in Jesus, one Lord, that's uh, Jesus and God, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through you all, and in you all. Oh, folks, what else do we need? Man, if we got Jesus, we've got everything. If we've got God, and in, in the scripture tells us God is love. He is love. So we need to remember that. So Jesus prays for our protection. Jesus prays for our unity. And lastly, Jesus prays for our love for one another. John 17, verse 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundations of the world. And you talk about deep love. He loved you before you were even created. He loved you before the world was even created. That's just, that just, to me, blows my mind. And that kind of love is the kind of love we not only need to have for our Heavenly Father, but for one another. Verse 25, O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. Think about it, folks. Jesus was the epitome of God, and he was, he was a mirror of what love truly is. Think about it. He had Judas. He knew what Judas was going to do. But he didn't treat him any different. Okay? He's the one that kept their money, and he was always around. It blows my mind 
to think that a guy could hang around Jesus for three years and not fall in love with him. Just, but he loved him unconditionally. He wanted him to be saved, but Judas made a choice, and it was a really, really bad choice. Verse 26, and I've declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love with which you love me may be in them, and I in them. So what is he saying? God and Jesus has always loved you, and people need to see the love of God in Jesus in us. Folks, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. It doesn't take a whole lot from us just to be nice to people. I am learning, and, and I really try to make this a practice. And I know a lot of you can't do this. Uh, you're shy, and I understand all that. But when I see a person crying, I don't care where they are at. I have to stop, and I have to say, could I pray for you? And I'm telling you, uh, you changed, uh, you know, God uses you to change the countenance on this person's face. And I even had a lady, and it's been a while, but she just said, she said, you don't know how bad I needed that prayer. And folks, that's what the love of God does in us. Because God loves us and he shows us his love, we need to love one another. We need to show God's love to the world. Okay, because sometimes we are the only love of God that people see. We are the only Christians that some people see. And folks love, I mean, you know, these three, but the greatest of these, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is what? Love. John 13. Let's go back a couple of chapters. John 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give you, Jesus' word, that you love one another as I have loved you. You also love one another. And do you know what man's love is? Man's love is, I'll love you if you love me. I'll love you if you do something for me. I'll be nice to you if you're nice to me. But if you're not nice to me, I'll hate you. And folks, that is not God's love. God's love is deeper than that. And it says, uh, a new commandment I give you that you may love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Twice he tells us the importance of having love in one another. Folks, I believe with all my heart, if a visitor comes into this building, and they sense the Spirit of God, and they feel accepted, and they feel loved, they are going to come back. I love it when, and I hear this every once in a while, people that join in our church, and here's what they say. They said, we came, you know, we, we decided we were going to go, and we we're going to start checking out churches. Well, we came to Rye Hill first, and then we said, you know, we're going to go. It, it was great, man. It was good. It was that. And we're going to go try another one next week. And about halfway through the week, they, they said, nah, we're coming back to Rye Hill. Why? Because of love, folks. Because of love. And, and that is so, so important. John 15. John 15, verse 9. As the Father loved me, I has also loved you. Abide in my love. What does abide mean? Hang out with. All right, we're supposed to abide in Christ. We need to abide in God's love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Folks, I am telling you, it makes a huge difference by what kind of home you were raised in. If, it was, if you had a father that was mean, okay, and that was hard on you, it, you, you know, you had that tendency in your life. But if you, if, if you had a father and, or even a mother that just, man, just loved on you and sang to you and showed you the love of God, I'm telling you, you were probably going to be like that. And that's what we have to understand. We are mirroring God and Jesus in our love for others. 
We need to show the world God's love. That's what he is saying. Verse 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy might be full, might remain in you, excuse me, and there's the word joy, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another even as I have loved you. And folks, joy, we spoke of uh, you know uh, earlier, but when you love someone, you love being around that person. And I love verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Is that not what God did for you? Jesus loved you so much that he laid down his life for you. And folks, if he lays down his life for us, we ought to be willing to lay down our lives for others. Father, thank you for just uh, the encouragement of, of what we have read tonight. God, to know that Jesus prays for us, that is just amazing. And to know he prays for our protection, uh, Lord, that just, that just makes you feel good. And when he prays for our unity, God, I pray that we would be peacemakers, that we would just be positive. And God, I pray that we could see the good in, in all situations of life. And God, I pray that we would mirror the love that God and Jesus had for one another. It's that mother love that a mother has, that special nurturing and that special gift for the babies and for the children. And God, I pray that we would have that tender love for one another and for lost people. God, people outside the church need to see that we do love them and we do care about them. And God, I pray that you would just give us divine appointments where we can show the love of God to others around us. God, thank you for your word. Thank you uh, for Jesus' words. I mean, just about everything we read tonight was Jesus' words. Uh, so God, thank you so much uh, for the lesson this night. And thank you that uh, we can pray 24-7, anytime, we can wake up in the middle of the night and start praying. And God, I do it a lot. I'll start praying and I'll just pray myself back to sleep. So God, I pray that we can always have uh, that kind of relationship with you. God, thank you that we're never alone. Thank you. There's no such thing as an impossible situation. God, help us to stay in tune with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.